Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Remember to like and subscribe and vote in the poll for better survival instincts next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building the badass big sister of Thor and Loki, Hela. There's a lot of pressure to get things right with your first kid. You're constantly looking up how to swaddle them, giving them too much attention, indulging their homicidal colonistic philosophy, and banishing them until you die. Hopefully you get it right the next time around. She's a killer queen, got that agility. Let's start off by figuring out our goals for this build. First, we need control over death itself. Actually, not that hard. Next, we'll make sure that we can summon weapons on command to throw at our younger siblings. Finally, we'll coat everything in black and very dark green to get a nice aesthetic of death. For stats, we'll be using the standard point array. You can roll if you want, just watch that wisdom and charisma. Wisdom will be number one. Death is a natural part of life, making you supernatural. Charisma next, Hela could step on your neck and you'd thank her for it. Intelligence after that, you're clearly smarter than your brothers. Dexterity will follow, she's very quick and nimble while fighting. Constitution is on the lower end, we just need other things more, and we'll dump strength as we can almost fully replace it with charisma later. As guardians are Asimar, but you got kicked out, so you're a fallen Asimar. That means you get plus two charisma and plus one strength, 60 feet of dark vision, celestial resistance to resist radiant and necrotic damage, healing hands letting you heal someone an amount equal to your total level as an action. You get to decide when people die after all, and the light bearer ability for the light cantrip which you don't really need because you can see in the dark already. The noble background would be great, but you were really more of an executioner and nobody respects your heritage so I'd go for soldier to get athletics and intimidation proficiency. We'll kick things off as a death domain cleric. You're actually one of the deities name checked in the dungeon master's guide for this, so that's fun. You can grab two skills from their list, history and religion are important considering you're the only one who seems to remember Asgard's true history. Additionally, you're proficient with all weapons. You get the reaper ability which lets you steal a necromancy cantrip from another spell list and hit two creatures within five feet of each other instead of just one. Chill Touch is a ranged spell attack dealing 1d8 necrotic damage and it prevents the targets from healing until the next turn. Now that reaper ability works for all necrotic cantrips, so Toll the Dead forces a wisdom save of 8 plus your proficiency bonus and your wisdom modifier dealing 1d8 necrotic damage to the targets that fail or 1d12 if they're not at full health. Spare the Dying automatically stabilizes a creature at 0 HP, you're the goddess of death, if you don't want them dead, they don't die. Thaumaturgy does a bunch of fun small things, you can make your voice three times as loud, make a candle flicker or change color, make some light tremors in the area or just open an unlocked door, create a small sound, there's a bunch of small things, just check it out in the player's handbook. For your first level spells as a death domain cleric, you get false life, giving you 1d4 plus 4 temporary HP for up to an hour. Ray of Sickness is a ranged spell attack that deals 2d8 poison damage and poisons the target if they fail a con save. Now since those are both domain spells, they don't count against the spells you have prepared. For other spells, I'd prepare Inflict Wounds. It's a melee spell attack that deals 3d10 necrotic damage. Cure Wounds heals 1d8 plus your Wisdom modifier, but that doesn't work on Undead, which spoilers we're getting later. Command lets you issue a one-word command that's not directly harmful to a creature that fails a Wisdom save. Kneel is probably your favorite one-word command. I'd call that going prone, and that would give your Executioner advantage to lop off their heads. Gotta love a Cleric build, right? Second level clerics can channel divinity and all clerics can turn undead, forcing a wisdom save on all undead creatures within 30 feet of you. If they fail, they have to run away from you and you are their goddess after all, so they should. Now, Death Domain's specific channel is Touch of Death, letting you add extra necrotic damage to a target you hit with a melee attack equal to five plus your cleric level times two. Now that's great and all, but right now your melee attacks are a little, what's the right word, bad? Let's fix that. Bouncing over to Warlocks, first level Warlocks can choose someone to pact up with considering you conjure all your weapons. I'm gonna say Hexblade is the most accurate. You get the Hexblade's Curse letting you pick a creature you really want to die for a minute. You get to land a crit with a 19 or a 20, add your proficiency bonus to the damage of your attacks, and when you kill them you get HP equal to your Warlock level plus your proficiency bonus. You're also a Hex Warrior which means that you can choose a weapon to use your Charisma modifier for instead of Strength or Dexterity. Hella uses knives, spears, and swords. Do whatever you want, it just can't be too handed. For your cantrips, Eldritch Blast is a prerequisite for the Warlock class. It's a ranged spell attack dealing 1d10 force damage. You can add more stuff to it later with invocations. All those weird bolt things she fires, we'll call that this. Also, go buy my shirt, please. It's an Eldritch Blast one. It's a meme. For first level spells, Comprehend Languages lets you understand all languages, so you can hear people groveling in all nine realms. You can also grab Shield from Hexblade, adding five to your AC as a reaction, which is good as I'd say low AC is one of your main weaknesses. Now let's talk multi-classing casters. Mixing Warlock with other classes 
means that you can mix and match what spells you cast with spell slots and which ones you use with the warlock spell slots. So if you want to use a cleric spell as a warlock spell, you can do that and vice versa. Finally, now that you're level three, your corrupted Azamar heritage gives you the necrotic shroud, giving you tiny skeletal wings and forcing a wisdom save of eight plus your proficiency bonus and charisma modifier. That's the same as your warlock save if you're interested, frightening any creature that fails for a minute. For the next minute, you can also deal extra necrotic damage equal to your level once per turn with a spell or a weapon attack. Embrace your inner goddess and show everyone what happens when you mess with death. Second level warlocks get eldritch invocations to make you more of a crazy death witch. Agonizing blast lets you add your charisma modifier to the damage of your eldritch blast, and armor of shadows lets you cast mage armor on yourself at will, giving you AC equal to 13 plus your dex modifier, so this is a nice little AC bump, but more importantly, it looks cool. Third level warlocks can get a packed boon. Packed to the blade lets you choose a weapon you can summon as an action. This also uses your hex warrior charisma replacement, regardless of whether it's a two-handed weapon or not now, so everything is at your disposal. You can also learn second level warlock spells. Blur from the hex blade makes you harder to hit, giving enemies disadvantage on attack rolls for up to a minute, depending on your concentration. Hella is really great at dodging, and we have two spellcasting modifiers we need to invest in, so this is kind of a good way to supplement lower decks. Fourth level warlocks get an ability score improvement. I invest in charisma first as we use it for our melee attacks and half of our spells. Fifth level warlocks can grab another eldritch invocation. Thirsting blade lets you attack twice as an action with your packed weapon, which you should be using anyway. You can also learn third level spells. Vampiric touch lets you make a special melee attack on your turns. It deals 3d6 necrotic damage and you get to heal half of that when it lands for some more sustainability. Your brothers aren't exactly pushovers, you might need to fight for a while. Sixth level hex blades get a cursed specter. When you kill a humanoid, you can pull their soul out of them to become a specter. The stats for that are in your monster manual. That specter gets half of your warlock level in temporary HP, and they get a bonus to attack rolls equal to your charisma modifier. And they don't stick around forever, disappearing after you take a long rest, but I'm sure you'll kill someone tomorrow. This is the first soldier in your undead army, don't worry, we're gonna get more. Back over to cleric, third level clerics can learn second level spells from your domain list. Blindness deafness forces a constitution save on a creature, blinding them or deafening them if they fail. If they pass, unfortunately, you don't just get to take one of their eyes, sorry. They reroll the save on their turns to fix it, but can up to a minute. Raven Feebleman is a ranged spell attack that does no damage. Instead, a target that it hits deals half damage with strength-based attacks until they can make a constitution save. Mighty Thor, more like not mighty anymore. Sorry. From the cleric list, spiritual weapon creates a floating spectral weapon that deals 1d8 force damage. You can move it up to 30 feet as a bonus action, and it'll just kind of attack automatically when someone comes up to it for a minute. No concentration required. Being a queen is all about delegating, so this is a nice step towards that. Fourth level cleric skin ability score improvement. I'm gonna say we should cap our charisma here. It's just good to hit hard every round with a hex weapon. Fifth level clerics did to bump their turn undead, now fully destroying any undead of challenge rating one half or lower. That might seem a little low, but if for some reason some of your old soldiers aren't feeling helpful, break them. You can also learn third level spells. Animate dead from the death domain turns a pile of bones into a skeleton to serve you, or a corpse into a zombie. You can issue them basic commands or take full control as a bonus action. Now, this isn't concentration, and you can have up to four creatures under your control at a time, but can grab two more for every higher level slot you use, lasts for 24 hours, and you can reassert your control by casting the spell again. From the actual cleric spell list, Revivify brings a target back from the dead if they've died within the last minute, though it does use a 500 gold piece diamond, so don't go broke, corpse isn't that much worse. I mean, it is, but whatever. Sixth level clerics get two uses of channel divinity per long rest. That touch of death stuff is also now dealing 17 extra necrotic damage, which is a big old oomph. You also get inescapable destruction, which lets you ignore resistance to necrotic damage for your cleric spells and channel divinity. This doesn't ignore full immunity, but it should make that damage more consistent. Seventh level clerics get fourth level spells. From your domain, death ward protects a creature from dying for eight hours, sending them to one HP instead of zero HP the first time they would have hit zero HP that day. Blight deals 8d8 necrotic damage to creatures that fail a constitution save. Plants have disadvantage and automatically take maximum damage, so Groot should stay the hell away from you. That's another bad pun. For your cleric spells, Guardian of Faith creates a large spectral guardian that deals 20 radiant damage to creatures that fail a dex save within 10 feet of the guardian. 10 if they pass, it lasts for 8 hours and disappears if it deals a total of 60 damage. For flavor, say it's shaped like a giant wolf. Sorry Fenris fans, it's a little hard to get a dire wolf for this girl. Eighth level cleric is a big one. First, you get an ability score improvement. Bump your wisdom for harder saves and better spells. Your destroy undead also now works on enemies of challenge rating one or lower, and you get divine strike, adding 1d8 necrotic damage to one weapon attack per turn. This really makes a slash to the eye hurt. 
I mean, more than a normal slash to the eye. Ninth level clerics can learn fifth level spells. Neither of the domain spells are super in character, but from the cleric list, raise dead brings someone back to life who hasn't been dead longer than 10 days. They'll have a negative four penalty to attack rolls and saving throws, but that penalty is reduced by one each long rest. If you don't want someone dead, fix it so they can make other people dead. 10th level clerics get divine intervention, which lets you call out to your god as an action. Roll a percentile die. If it's lower than your cleric level, your god will step in and intervene with something the DM determines is appropriate. If you succeed, you'll have to wait a week to do it again. If it fails, you can do it tomorrow. For your deity, technically that's yourself, but I actually like the flavor of it being Odin, someone who really doesn't want to help you, and that's why this rarely works. 11th level clerics get 6th level spells, and I want a bunch of these. We've been holding back a bit lately for a reason. Harm deals 14d6 necrotic damage to creatures that fail at constitution save, half on a success. This can't drop someone to zero, but if they fail that con save, they can't heal that damage back until remove disease effect is applied. Create Undead can only be cast at night, but this turns three humanoids into ghouls under your control for 24 hours, and you can recast this like Animate Dead to maintain control longer. Finally, Blade Barrier creates a wall of blades 100 feet long and 20 feet high, or ringed walls 60 feet in diameter. It provides three quarters cover and forces a dexterity save on creatures in the space, dealing 60 10 slashing damage on a failed save, half on a success. I'm not sure there's another character I'll ever be able to use this spell with, but I love it, so thanks for voting for Hala. 12th level clerics get an ability score improvement, or really close to capping our wisdom hopefully you rolled well it's so sad to be just out of reach 13th level clerics can learn 7th level spells regenerate heals 48 plus 15 and 10 hp per minute it restores severed body parts in two minutes so you could heal thor's eye but you know you don't have to our capstone is 14th level of cleric bumping your destroy undead to challenge rating two or lower but forget that because your touch of death is now dealing 32 extra necrotic damage and that ignores resistances it's probably more useful your divine strike also increases to 2d8 necrotic damage for some great extra damage once per turn now that we've hit level 20 let's figure out how viable this build is first you're a better melee fighter than most melee fighters with extra attack divine strike hexblade's curse and touch of death you're probably outclassing your hammering brother for damage and hammering is like his whole thing you're also able to get a whole undead army with animate dead create undead and a cursed specter making sure you'll have backup finally you can heal and even bring people back from the dead that's incredibly useful as dead party members don't tend to be very useful for weaknesses you got low hp somewhere in the 100 range so power word kill is a power word problem for you along with other heavy hits Speaking of low constitution, your concentration is bad, so any spells you need to focus on might fail pretty quickly. Finally, your AC is low, adding to all the previous problems with the limited ways to avoid damage. But your enemies will probably be dead before you. Use your huge damage spells and send an army in to finish them off with your weapons as a last resort that's still pretty effective. Just remember there's a reason you have an army. If you get killed, you have to deal with the god of death, and word is, she is not super nice. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe for more. We make two videos per week unless I'm dead. I'm going to scramble the schedule a little bit because I want a Borderlands build out for Borderlands 3 and I want you to pick it. Vote in the poll for Brick, Lilith, Mordecai, or Roland and come back Thursday for a real zero. Oh wait, now it's a hero?